Okay, so get this, right? Imagine just describing your app idea, like talking to a computer, mm -hmm. and it just builds it. Wow. No coding. Yeah. No messing with software. Just like straight up creation. Right. It's like, we're talking sci-fi stuff here, right? It is, yeah. That's what we're going to be diving into today. Okay. Um, we've got this really cool article about DeepSeek. Mm -hmm. It's this brand new AI system. Yeah. Causing a lot of buzz out there, even challenging like the big guys, like OpenAI. Right. So our mission, if we choose to accept it, is to uncover mm -hmm. how this deep seek thing actually works. Okay. Why it's such a game changer and what it could mean for, well, anyone mm -hmm. who wants to create software. You know. Yeah, I think uh, what's really interesting about DeepSeek is that it yeah. goes beyond just being like an AI assistant. Mm -hmm. We're talking about maybe changing how software is made, like yeah. making it for everyone, not just the uh, the coding wizards out there. Yeah. So let's unpack this a bit. So the article dives into uh, two main parts of DeepSeek. Okay. Beta R2 mm -hmm. and Janus Pro. These are like the power yeah. couple of AI, right? Exactly. They each have their specialty, right? So Beta R2 is the brains, wow. the logic, the problem solving part. Yeah. It figures out, you know, how your app idea actually works, the steps, all that. Okay. Then you've got Janus Pro, that's the creative one, right? It handles how it looks. Right, right. Make sure it's all sleek and user friendly, you know, that people will actually want to use it. So they put these two to the test. Oh yeah. In one experiment, right? Yeah. Like, they challenged DeepSeek to build a whole calculator app. Mm -hmm. And get this, all it had was a text prompt, like, hey, DeepSeek, wow. make me a calculator, and boom, it just appears. Yeah, yeah, like magic almost, right? Yeah, and it even shows you a preview, like, as it's building it. That is so cool. A wild, right? It is, yeah. And what's even more amazing is that DeepSeek, it wasn't just following instructions blindly, you know? Beta R2, it actually broke down the problem right like it figured out that a calculator needs buttons it needs a display it needs to update in real time oh wow you know it's almost like it was thinking through the process right which is a huge step towards uh what the experts call true ai yeah not just pattern recognition you know but actually understanding and solving problems yeah. on its own that's huge so while beta r2 is doing all that mm. Janus Pro steps in to make it look good. Exactly. Yeah. It creates this really cool, like, user-friendly interface. Yeah. You can see it right away, right? It's all happening at the same time as the code's being written in the background. Wow. It's crazy how seamless the whole thing is. It's amazing. I mean, and it makes you think, right? Like, could design become as easy as just saying what you want? Right. It's like, is this the future of design? You know, Deep Seek's kind of hinting at that. Absolutely, yeah. And here's where it gets even wilder. Right? Mm -hmm. This DeepSeek built this whole calculator app using way less power than its competitors. Really? Way less. We're talking like 50,000 GPUs for DeepSeek mm -hmm. versus, oh, OpenAI needing like 500,000. Wow. It's like DeepSeek figured out how to be 10 times more efficient. That is a huge difference. Right. And that's a big deal. Yeah. Because first off, it means lower costs, which is always good, right? Of course, yeah. But it also makes this kind of like super advanced AI way more accessible, right? Totally, yeah. Imagine like a, a small business owner wants to build a custom app. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't need a massive data center. Right. They could potentially run DeepSeek on like a powerful home computer. Yeah. Which totally changes who can be a part of like AI development. It really does, yeah. It's like democratizing access to this kind of technology. Exactly. Yeah, and the article really drives home this point about cost. You know, mm -hmm. like OpenAI's models, they're super powerful. Oh, yeah. But they cost billions. Yeah. But DeepSeek, it gets similar results, but for way less money. It's like they found a way to make the most advanced AI suddenly affordable. Right. Not just for the, you know, tech giants. Yeah, exactly. So for everyone. So it's like DeepSeek is challenging this idea yeah. that bigger is always better in AI. Yeah, it's not about brute force anymore. Right. It's about smart design and targeted training, getting amazing results without needing a supercomputer. Right. So we've got Beta R2, thinking like a programmer. Mm hmm Janus Pro, yeah. designing like a pro, right. all while being super efficient. Yeah. But uh, let's focus on Beta R2 for a second. Okay. The article uses some pretty strong language, right? Describing it as almost human-like in its thinking. Yeah. What makes it so special? So Beta R2, it goes beyond just, you know, doing what it's told. Mm. 
It solves problems by breaking them down into smaller steps. Yeah. It can even, like, anticipate problems before they happen. Wow. And it can actually reflect on its own process. No way. That's something we haven't seen in AI before. That's wild. It's almost like it can think about its own thinking. So it's not just to understand the words, but, like, the meaning behind them. Exactly, yeah. It's the difference between, like... A student who can just repeat facts mm. and a student who can actually use what they know to solve a brand new problem. Right, right. Beta R2 is doing the latter. That's impressive. And that's why everyone's talking about its potential for, you know, artificial general intelligence. Okay. The kind of AI that can learn anything, adapt to any task. It makes you wonder what it can't do. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the amazing Beta R2, mm -hmm. but let's not forget our artistic genius over here, Janus Pro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this isn't just some AI spitting up pretty pictures, right? No, no, no. It's a master of both creating and understanding images. Right. It's got that two-way thing going on. Yeah. What sets it apart is it uses different pathways for like getting visuals and making them. Okay. Unlike a lot of other models, and this makes it really good at both. So the images it produces, they're sharper, they're more stable. Right. It's not just keeping up with like Dell E3. Mm -hmm. It's actually beating it in a lot of ways. Yeah, the article even talks about how well it does on these benchmarks like uh, Jenny Vol and DPG Bench. Yeah, those are like the industry standards, you know? Yeah, and remember that cool real-time interface for the calculator app we talked about? Oh, yeah. That was all Genus Pro, blending the design with the code from Beta R2. Mm -hmm. It's like watching two masters collaborate. Right? It really is, and this level of integration, it's groundbreaking, right? Yeah. We're seeing a future where design and development just work together seamlessly. Right. No more back and forth. It's like the line between artistic vision and technical stuff just disappears. It's wild, right? I mean, so we've got this AI that can build a whole app from a simple prompt super efficiently with an amazing interface. Yeah. But what does it all mean for, like, the average person? You know? That's the big question, right? Yeah, like, what's the big picture here? Well, think about it this way, right? Building software now, it takes specific skills, mm -hmm. lots of training, all that. Mm -hmm. But what if anyone, like no matter who they are or what they know, could just describe their idea and have an app built? Wow, that would be huge. Right. It would be like anyone with a good idea could compete in the tech world. Exactly. Yeah, not just the big companies with their fancy teams. Yeah, and it's not just about apps, yeah. right? Think about any creative thing that could be helped by AI. Oh, yeah, like websites, music, video games. Yeah. The possibilities are endless. It's like opening a door to a whole new world. It is, and it's not even just about convenience. It's about accessibility. Right. Imagine a world where language doesn't matter anymore because anyone can just tell AI their ideas no matter what language they speak. That's a powerful thought. Yeah. I mean, so DeepSeek could really level the playing field in tech. Yeah, it could give everyone a chance to be a part of it. But let's be realistic, right? Mm-hmm. The article does talk about some challenges that DeepSeek still needs to overcome. Right. Of course, there are always challenges with new tech. Yeah, one that stood out to me was, like, the limited resolution that Janus Pro can handle right now. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Right now, it's restricted to working with images at uh, 384 by 384 pixels. Okay. Which is fine for, like, simple things, like that calculator interface we talked about. Right. But... It could be a problem for more complex designs, you know, things that need more detail. Yeah, I can see how that would be a hurdle, like if you're trying to use high-res photos or really detailed illustrations. Exactly. Yeah, that's something they'll need to figure out as they keep developing it. Right, but it's important to remember, this is just the beginning for DeepSeek, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's still early days. Yeah, the developers are always working on improvement. They're constantly pushing the boundaries. And I wouldn't be surprised if they made some big leaps in resolution in other areas pretty soon. I'm sure we'll see some exciting advancements. It's exciting to think about what they'll be able to achieve. But even with these limitations, DeepSeek's already blown past expectations in a lot of ways. It has, yeah. The article really highlights its efficiency, yeah. especially compared to its competitors. Yeah, that efficiency is key. And not just for, you know, saving money, right. but also for making this technology more sustainable. You know? Yeah, that's a big factor these days. Yeah, because training and running these massive AI models, it takes a ton of energy. It does. It has a real environmental impact. So the fact that DeepSeek can get similar mm -hmm. or even better results with less computing power, it's a win for the planet, too. Absolutely. It shows that progress doesn't have to come at the expense of the environment. It's all about finding that balance, right? Mm -hmm. 
pushing forward, but also being mindful of the impact. Right. Sustainability is key. And speaking of impact, I think we should talk about the bigger picture, like the societal impact of all this. Oh, yeah, that's important. Like, what does it mean for us when AI starts doing things that we thought only humans could do? Right. It's a big question. And a technology this powerful, it could have both positive and negative effects. Yeah. It's crucial that we start talking about how to develop it ethically with safeguards to prevent misuse. Yeah, like with great power comes great responsibility kind of thing, right? Exactly. And that responsibility is on all of us, you know, developers, policymakers, even everyday users like our listeners. Everyone has a role to play. We need to shape how AI is used. We can't just let it happen. We have to guide it. And that's what we're trying to do here on the Deep Dive, right? Absolutely. Give our listeners the knowledge they need to navigate this like rapidly changing world. Yeah, we want to empower people, give them the information they need to make informed decisions. Right, to be a part of the conversation. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's a conversation that everyone needs to be a part of. So I think it's time to give our listeners a moment to process all of this. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. We've covered a lot of ground here in this first part. We have. But stick around, okay? Because we'll be back in a flash to wrap things up and leave you with some final thoughts to ponder. Okay, sounds good. See you in a bit. See you soon. Yeah. So welcome back to our deep dive into deep seek. Yeah, we've been exploring this incredible AI system. Right, it really makes you rethink how software could be made. It does. It's amazing to imagine creating software just by, like, explaining your idea to a computer. I know, right? But, <laughs> like with anything this powerful, there are always questions, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. And one of the big ones that keeps coming up for me mm -hmm. is what this means for jobs, you know? Like, right. if AI can build software from just a description, yeah. what happens to all the programmers out there? It's a worry I've heard a lot that AI like this will replace human programmers. Mm-hmm. Like, make them obsolete. What do you think about that? It's a valid concern, definitely something we need to talk about. Yeah. But it's important to remember, like, throughout history, yeah. new tech has often led to new kinds of jobs, even as it changed or replaced old ones. So instead of thinking of AI as replacing us, right? maybe it's more like working with us. You know? Exactly. Yeah, like augmenting our ability. Right, right. Think of it like this. AI could handle the boring, repetitive parts of programming. Oh, cool. Freeing up human programmers to focus on the bigger problems, the creative stuff, the innovation. So it becomes a tool for developers, not a replacement. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this could actually create more demand for skilled programmers. Okay. The ones who can work well with AI systems, guide their development, make sure they're used ethically, all that. That's a much more positive way to look at it. It is, yeah. And it ties back to what we've been saying about DeepSeek. Right. It's not just about the tech itself. Mm -hmm. It's about how we choose to use it. Right. It's about what kind of future we want to build with it. Exactly. Technology is a tool. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Right. We have to make sure AI is developed responsibly, mm -hmm. you know, with a focus on improving lives and making a better world for everyone. It's about finding that balance. Yeah. Right. Harnessing the power, but making sure it serves us, not the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. And the article mentioned this idea of a reset of knowledge. Oh, right. right. What do you think they meant by that? It's an interesting concept, right? Like oh. we have so much information available now. More than ever before. Yeah. Thanks to the Internet, AI, all of that. Right. It's changing how we learn, how we think. Even how we form opinions. It's like the old rules don't apply anymore. Yeah, we can't just rely on, like, the traditional sources for information. Right, we have to be more critical, seek out knowledge from different places. And that's where AI, like, deep seek comes in, right? Exactly, yeah. It can create new knowledge, mm -hmm. but also make what we already know more accessible to everyone. Like having a personalized tutor who can explain anything you want. Exactly. Imagine asking deep seek to break down a complicated scientific theory. Yeah. Or summarize a dense philosophical text. It could change how we learn. It's really exciting. It's like democratizing knowledge. Yeah. Making lifelong learning possible for everyone. It is. And it's just one example of how AI is changing things. It's an incredible time to be alive. Yeah. Even if it's a bit overwhelming sometimes. I agree. It's mind-blowing to think about all the possibilities AI is creating. So as we move on to the last part of our deep dive, mm -hmm. we want you to think about how this could change your world. Right. How could you use this tech to learn something new, mm -hmm. to solve a problem you're facing, or even just explore a new idea? The possibilities are endless. So stay curious, stay informed. Yeah. And 
most importantly, stay engaged. Because the future of AI is happening now yeah. and your voice matters. So welcome back to the deep dive. We've been talking all about DeepSeek, this AI that's like totally changing how we think about making software. Yeah, it's really making waves, like rethinking the whole process. Right. It's crazy to imagine just telling a computer your idea and it builds the app. I know, it's wild, but like with any powerful tech, there are questions. Oh, absolutely. And as a big one for me is like, what happens to jobs? You know, right, right. If AI can do all the coding, what about all the human programmers? Yeah, it's a common concern. People worry about AI replacing them, making their skills obsolete. What do you think about that? Well, it's a valid worry and definitely something we should talk about as a society. Mm. But I think it's good to remember, like, historically, new tech often creates new jobs, even as it changes or replaces old ones. So it's not necessarily about AI taking over completely. Right. More like working together, you know. AI and humans side by side. Exactly. Augmenting our abilities. Like, think of it this way. Okay. AI could handle all the repetitive, boring coding tasks. The grunt work. Exactly. And that frees up human programmers to focus on the more creative, complex stuff, the problem solving. So AI becomes a tool, not a replacement. Right. And this could actually lead to a higher demand for skilled programmers. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The kind who can work with AI, guide its development, make sure it's used ethically, all that. That's a much more optimistic way to look at it. It is. And it connects back to what we've been discussing about DeepSeek. Right. It's not just the technology itself. It's how we use it. Exactly. What kind of future we build with it. Technology is a tool, right? Yeah. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Absolutely. So we have to be careful, make sure AI is developed responsibly. Focused on making things better for everyone. Right. Improving lives, making yeah. the world a better place. It's about finding that balance, isn't it? Using the power, but making sure it serves us, not the other way around. Exactly. Yeah. The article talked about a reset of knowledge. What do they mean by that? It's fascinating, right? We have access to so much information now. More than ever before. Thanks to the internet, AI, all of that. It's changing how we learn, how we think, even what we believe. Yeah, the old ways don't really apply anymore. Yeah, we can't just trust the same old sources. We have to be more critical, find knowledge from different places. And that's where AI, like deep seek, could be huge, right? Yeah, it can generate new knowledge, but also make existing knowledge easier to understand. Like having a personal explainer for anything you want to know. Exactly. Imagine asking DeepSeek to break down a scientific theory. Or summarize a complex book. It could totally change how we learn. It's exciting, right? Mm -hmm. Making knowledge accessible to everyone. It's a powerful idea. It's a crazy time to be alive. So much change happening. It is. Yeah, a bit overwhelming, but also incredible. So many possibilities with AI. Limitless, really. So as we wrap up our deep dive into DeepSeek, we want to leave you with this. Okay. How could this technology change your life? Yeah, think about that. Could you use it to learn something new, solve a problem, explore an idea? What would you create? The possibilities are truly endless, so stay curious, stay informed. Keep exploring. And most importantly, stay engaged. The future of AI is happening now. And we all have a role to play. Absolutely. Every voice matters. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into DeepSeek. We'll see you next time for another exploration of the amazing world of technology. See you then.